everyone, today I bring you the Travel Sacks 2. Let's unpeel this and describe exactly what it is. So as you can see there, this is the smallest and tiniest electronic saxophone on the market and it compares somewhat with the size of, well, in this case, quite a giant banana. But on a more serious note, I'm really excited to get into this because I think that this is a bit of a revolution and potentially a really great tool for all of you sax players out there trying to seek that extra practice time because you can play on this thing anytime, anywhere and in complete silence. The designers have managed to make it so compact by bringing together the left hand and right hand stacks and eliminating this gap in the middle. And they've kind of chopped off the top and bottom section which just gives it this really small size configuration. And then beyond that, it has a regular saxophone fingering setup. You can see it's just the usual standard layout here. And it has a two and a half octave range, just like a normal saxophone, but also it has the ability to have altissimo notes programmed so you can get an extra octave on top. It has 70 onboard sounds, and these can easily be accessed via the Travel Sax app which connects via Bluetooth to the travel sax. And for me, one of the coolest things about this is that it also acts as a Bluetooth receiver. So you can listen to backing tracks from your phone into the travel sax and have fun uh, mixing the sounds in from the travel sax with the backing tracks. And finally, it has MIDI connectivity. You can see there's a USB-C output here. So if you do want to use this as a MIDI controller, you can do so. Okay, let's take a look inside the box. And what a nice box it is as well. We've got some, a quote here from Charlie Parker and some general nice design work inside. And as we open it up, we're confronted with a rather nice carrying case here. It's got a sort of rubberized finish and some textured writing here um, showing the maker's Odyssey music there. Got a zip opening and a very convenient carrying handle as well. Now we have some instructions, always very useful. And at the top here, we've got a sort of mesh pocket. Let's see what's inside. That's the alto mouthpiece, which we'll get into later. There's a cleaning cloth. And we have some sort of pouch here, presumably for the mouthpieces and accessories. And also a USB-C cable, great. Now let's get on to unveiling the saxophone. We've got a nice sort of covering section here and a, a neoprene style material. And as you can see, the Travel Sax 2 is really neatly fitted into the internal rubberized section here. Um, it's very satisfying there. It's a nice tight fit. Um, so this is the main unit itself. And further, if we look back into the case here, we can see three adapters here the baritone, tenor, and the soprano adapters. Additionally, we have three further adapters here, which are available as a combination in an accessories kit, which you can buy separately. So this is a recorder style mouthpiece, um, an additional alto neck here with a curve on it, and a, another alto neck and this one is just an extended alto neck and they all have the appropriate o-rings here to fit the correct mouthpiece so in this case these are alto and the ones in the case here we have tenor baritone and soprano and they have the appropriate sized o-rings to take the mouthpiece in question Okay, so I think it might be relevant to try and place this instrument into the context of other wind synths 
and digital saxophones on the market. So what similarities does it have to the ones that we know and love? Well, like pretty much all of them, it has a breath sensor, so it picks up the dynamics that the player puts into the instrument. If you blow softly, you get a soft sound. If you blow hard, then the sound opens up, uh, becomes bigger, and often changes timbre. So that's the first thing. What it doesn't have is a bite sensor like the Akai and Roland models. Um, so in that sense, it makes it very similar to the Yamaha YDS, where you can literally just blow down it like this, and, and if you were to do the same with a mouthpiece, you would get the same result. So in other words, the emphasis with this sax is all on the fingering as opposed to any sort of expressive playing that you might wish to do where you're manipulating your mouth, as it were. The other thing, which is pretty obvious, as you can see here, is that it has a real saxophone key layout. And really, the Emeo and the Yamaha digital sax are the only other ones that do this. Um, it feels very natural to me. Everything's sort of spaced out, just as in a regular saxophone. It's just that the two hand stacks, as mentioned before, are very close to one another. So it just takes a little getting used to the, the, the notion that your right hand has to be further up towards your left hand. But otherwise, the fact that it's the same key layout um, over and above some of the other wind synths on the market does give it a real advantage for many sax players out there, I'm sure. But unlike the YDS, and for me this is a big advantage to the travel sax, is that the key system operates with light sensors as opposed to with touch sensors. So what that means is there's a, a little light sensor underneath each key and as you press the keys, when you get 90% of the way down, 90% travel, the note kicks in, as opposed to 100%, which is what you need um, with some of the other instruments like the YDS. And so the, the net result is that the, the keying sensation and the results of the sound coming out are more natural on this. You don't find yourself sort of tripping up because you've not triggered the note. So immediately I get a great technical feel on this when I'm just moving around uh, the notes. It didn't take so much getting used to compared to some of the other wind synthesizers uh, and digital saxes, so I, I love that aspect to this one. And it obviously stands out from the crowd, the fact that it is so tiny and compact, unlike all of the other synthesizers and digital saxophones on the market. And so this really does give it a big advantage in terms of its portability, if that is a really important aspect to you. Now, on first sight, when you unpack this, you may get the impression, because it is so light and small, that it's in some ways insubstantial and perhaps are just a little bit plasticky. You think, well, it's a lot of money for something so small. And um, perhaps that might be a valid criticism, but I suppose the whole point of it is that it does everything that you need it to do, and it is supposed to be small because that is the, the very thing that it's trying to do that is different from the others. Uh, but it's just worth pointing out that if you do have that initial impression that it's slightly toy-like, perhaps, once you get into this thing and you realise um, you know, the qualities and the functionality and everything that it can do, I think you'll soon forget that initial impression. Okay, let's look inside the app. So as you can see here on the home screen, we've got the sounds. You can see the menu along the bottom, sounds on the left. And on the top, they call it Odyssey Music Sax. And within there, you've got your four uh, main instruments, tenor, alto, soprano, baritone. And then I'll just briefly show you some of the others. We've got piano, different piano types in there, uh, guitar, a few guitar types, various strings, ensemble, etc. Go down here, we've got some electronics ones, some interesting. You always get the usual old bird tweets and helicopters in there. I think it's a, it seems to be compulsory for these guys. And then some synths, which I always love playing along with. Okay, so that's the sounds. And then further to the right here in configuration, 
Um, we've got various settings. I think it's worth just showing you this, edit fingerings. So previously you can see here, I have programmed various Altissimo fingerings. Uh, very easy to do, I won't go into it right now, but suffice to say, it's extremely intuitive how to do this and it works very well. Um, and you can see here a section on effects, various volumes, so you can get the ratio of the, the headphones and the instrument correctly if you're trying to connect via Bluetooth and play along with tracks. Um, you've got the usual reverb. Um, okay, so that's the configuration section. Here on the right here, there's a, a record section where you can play along. Uh, you can record something and then just listen back and kind of track your progress. Um, I'm not personally overly bothered by that, but it's nice to have that there. And then just to the right of that, we've got learn. So there's various tutorials on, uh, and, you know, advice on how to use the thing and tips and all the rest of it. And then finally, you, uh, we've got a profile here. Now, there's nothing much going on here, but uh, if I was to record my um, myself over the course of several days, you would build up lots of sessions here and you can kind of track your progress, as it were. Uh, but that's basically the app, extremely intuitive and just works very well. OK, now to give my general thoughts and my verdict on the Travel Sacks 2. Well, the first thing to say really is that it's just incredibly appealing due to its lightweight and compact nature. It's just such a lot of fun to play. And in fact, I found myself when prepping for this video, just playing it at night, just kind of lounging out on the couch, going into a very relaxed position that you wouldn't normally uh, condone for sax players to use but you know it didn't really make a difference with this because it's so small I was just working on my fingering so I love that aspect. Um, the fingering layout and the key action as mentioned before is brilliant. I love the fact that the light sensors do their job so well and everything just pops out technically beautifully. Um, I find it overall just really easy and intuitive to use in terms of its connection to the app. Everything works beautifully and particularly the Bluetooth in aspect and playing along with any backing track or YouTube or anything like that. Um, you can kind of create your own sound world. So you put on a, a pair of headphones, which is a much better way to enjoy the sound rather than the little speaker I should mention. And you have the quality of that backing track fused with the, the, the lovely sounds on board and you can just go into your own sound world, knock yourself out and um, an hour later you found that you've done a great practice session. I love that. And the fact that it can be used as a MIDI controller could be useful for players who like to feel like they're playing the saxophone to control their MIDI as opposed to doing it on a keyboard if they don't perhaps have the keyboard skills. Um, so it suits all you sax players out there who want to get into the uh, recording side of music. And then finally, and this is a real nice little sort of quirky thing that I found out about it uh, on day two of my experience with this, which is that you, you've got springs here, obviously, as you might assume, in order to, to make the key action work, just like on a real saxophone. But these springs are exposed here. You can actually pop out the keys and adjust the spring tension should you need to make something just a, a bit lighter or perhaps heavier, which is actually something I needed to do for the B and the bis key. Um, now I find that they are much lighter and I can flit around here without having any issues at all. So lots of really great things to say about this. I, I do love it and I think it has a brilliant place in the market. And just perhaps a couple of, um, I don't really want to say negatives, but um, for me, these negatives I'm about to mention have sort of turned into a positive in a way. The first thing that I noticed on day one is that because it's so light, it felt like there was a bit of a, a lack of stability, particularly when you're moving left hand to, to right hand. It just sort of moves around a little bit. And um, I found it okay in the lower reaches, but it was just more the upper reaches where I was having trouble. Then I realized that I could tag on one of these straps. This is a BG Curve Soprano strap click it into place and everything just becomes a little bit more stable. Now you do get these extender necks as mentioned before and they can just add a certain amount of extra, okay you get that length which is great if you prefer that, but I find there's a little bit of a wobble to them um, which, which is maybe fine, perhaps you could kind of play through it and forget about it, but for me I prefer the slightly shorter necks because I just get that little bit more 
stability. So in conclusion, in a sense, I view the travel sax as having lots of similarities to the Emeo in the sense that it is a great practice tool. So what it is not is a replacement for your saxophone. It is a supplement. And in that sense, it really has the benefit of extending out your practice sessions. You know, you want to do your practice on your saxophone when you get those opportunities for all the reasons that we want to play the saxophone. But when you cannot do that, when you are traveling, when you're in a room, you don't want to disturb the neighbors, the wife, the boyfriend, whatever it might be, this really does come into its own. It doesn't pretend to have lifelike saxophone sounds. And you know what? I wouldn't want that anyway. When I play on these things, I like to enjoy the alternative sounds, the synth sounds and all the rest of it. And for me, this is just all about working on technique, brain training, learning new tunes and all the rest of it. And once you've put that work in and then you actually transfer it to your saxophone, you realize what a benefit this thing has been for you. But beyond that, and aside from all of that, you can just have a lot of fun, as I've described. That This is a really great little tool on the saxophone market now. And I think it's going to be uh, widely received with praise by all of the saxophone community. And for that reason, we are now stocking this at sax. And we have these in stock now. And if you'd like to order one, you can click on the link below and we will gladly sell you the latest travel sax too.